Now we are going to create a template for the headstock. This template here is similar to the standard paddle shape made popular by Martin. For the beginner, I highly recommend keeping it simple and copying the design from your plans, which more than likely will be some variation of this paddle design. The paddle shape is easy to replicate because it is essentially made up of straight lines rather than curves. Furthermore, the potential for router bit tear out is minimal. As you'll see in a later video, when we route the headstock shape, router bit tear out can be a concern on headstock shapes with long curves and changing grain direction. I will be creating a template with an unconventional design, but again, I recommend that the student either stays true to their plans or creates a simple paddle shape design. On future guitars, the student can re-watch this video and consider taking on a less conventional headstock shape. Here I am sticking the final draft of my headstock shape to my light box surface and sticking a piece of tracing paper over top. That way I can trace a copy of the design to use for the template and preserve the original. Notice how I only trace half of the design. Since the design is symmetrical, as most acoustic headstock shapes are, this is all I need to make the template. I cut the tracing out with a razor knife staying well outside of the lines. I stick the tracing to quarter inch MDF using double stick tape. Be careful when placing the paper on the tape and use the roll of tape to roll out any creases or air bubbles. Now I am going to carefully cut along the lines, essentially as I would for a fine inlay. The board that I am clamping to the bench is intended for use with a jeweler's saw. As demonstrated in the top right corner of the screen, the saw blade is positioned in the hole with the workpiece resting on the surface. This jig is easy to make. Drill a half inch hole about two and three quarters of an inch from one end of a board. Then simply make a cut towards the hole on the bandsaw and two diagonal cuts to relieve the corners so that the saw frame can swivel unobstructed. I cut along the lines very slowly and very carefully. It is very easy to break a blade. It takes a while to get used to it, but I apply almost no forward pressure when I am cutting and I advance the workpiece through the blade and not the blade through the workpiece. Notice how I constantly blow the dust away as I cut. It is difficult to make a sharp turn in quarter inch MDF without breaking a blade. So I release the blade and remove the saw once I reach the turn. Then I reattach the blade and start on the next curve.
Any straight cuts on the template can be managed on a shooting board with a block plane. In fact, since a paddle design is all straight cuts, a paddle shaped template can be shaped entirely on the shooting board with a block plane. And now to fine tune the curves with a variety of needle files. It is important to smooth out all inconsistencies. Again, if you are using a paddle design, you shouldn't need to do this. Sandpaper wrapped around a dowel works just as well as a round file. I mark out the centers of the tuner holes with a center punch and drill a 3 seconds of an inch hole at each location. With one half of the template complete, now I can duplicate the other half on the router table. I stick the half template onto another piece of quarter inch MDF with double stick tape, and I cut around the template on the bandsaw. Now using a router bit with a guide bearing, I set the height of the bit so that the guide bearing will ride against the original template. To keep my hands far away from the bit, I use a cam clamp as a sort of handle as you see here. I heat up a metal spatula with a heat gun and separate the two pieces. I mark and drill the tuner holes.
To attach the two halves, I lay down some wax paper and simply press the halves together while running a bead of water-thin superglue along the joint. The superglue will wick down into the joint and a little accelerator cures the joint instantly. Now I will use this template to make a second template. That way, if I damage the original, I will always have a backup. Furthermore, this template is too thin. So for the second template, the one I will actually use on my guitar neck, I need 3 quarter inch MDF. You may wonder why I don't simply use 3 quarter inch MDF when I make the original template. This is because cutting and shaping such a thick template by hand would be considerably more difficult than it is with quarter inch material. Instead of running back to the store to get some 3 quarter inch MDF, you can just glue and stack three pieces of the quarter inch MDF that you have left over. Make sure that you leave this clamped up for at least four hours. Trace the original template. Cut just outside the line. Apply double stick tape. Attach the original template. Adjust the bit to the height of the original template and route as you did before. Don't forget to mark and drill 3 32nd of an inch holes at the tuner hole locations. And there you have it. Two templates, one for posterity and a more durable template for use in routing headstock shapes. Mm -hmm.